So what are we going to do with our understanding of coordinates of points in n-dimensional space? Well, before getting to calculus, we're going to have to build up some algebra, some geometry, and the right place to start on that front is thinking about distances. So perhaps you recall how to compute the distance between points using the Pythagorean theorem. In 2D, it's really simple. Let's say we have a point P and a point Q with coordinates P1, P2, and Q1, Q2. I'm going to use those instead of X and Y coordinates. Then the distance between those points in the plane is the square root of the sum of the differences in squares between the first coordinates and the second coordinates. And in dimension three, this generalizes using, again, the sum of the squares of the differences. But now there's three differences that we have to work with. The first coordinate, the second coordinate, the third coordinate. You can get that inductively by uh, building up more and more right triangles in three-dimensional space and proceeding inductively, you can get the corresponding formula in n-dimensional space. To get the distance between two points in n-dimensional space, you take the differences in the ith coordinate, square those, take the sum of those as i goes from 1 to n. This is maybe best seen in a couple of examples. Let's start off simple. What's the distance between a point and a line in three-dimensional space? So let's say that we have a point P, maybe it's got coordinates 2, 3, negative 1, and then I have some line that is given in a parametrized form. So I tell you what uh, the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the z coordinate is as a function of my parameter t. Maybe think of it as time. Then at any given value of t, you can compute the distance d from the point P to the corresponding point on the line by using the distance formula in 3D. So I have x of t and y of t and z of t, and I look at the differences between those and the x, y, and z coordinates of that point P, take the squares, sum them up, take the square root, that is the distance. Now, I really want the distance between P and the line. That is the shortest distance or the orthogonal distance. And I can get that Maybe using some single variable calculus, right? I'm, I'm looking for the minimal distance, and I have this function d of t that depends on a single variable. So compute the derivative, set it equal to zero. Oh man, that would be a mess. All those square roots, oh yeah, yeah. There's gotta be a better way than this. And there is, and we'll get to it later. But for now, we're going to continue thinking about distances, in this case, moving up to the eighth dimension, where we're going to look at distances between configurations of points in the plane. Let's say you have a, a two-dimensional plane, and I put down uh, a number of objects, maybe robots, maybe chess pieces, something like that. But I have four of them. I have four objects in the plane and they are configured in a certain way. Since each object is specified by two coordinates, an x and a y coordinate, the net configuration is specified by eight coordinates. That is four pairs of x and y coordinates. So this is a location, a point in an eight dimensional configuration space. And now I want to change configurations, move to a new point in configuration space. And what's going to happen in reality is I'm moving each of these four objects to new locations in the plane. So I have new x and y coordinates for each object. Now I want to know what is the distance between the first configuration and the second configuration? I don't, I don't mean the distances between the objects. I mean the net distance between these two configurations. That's distance in the eight-dimensional configuration space. So what do I do? I figure out the differences in the x and y coordinates for each object. I square those differences. I sum them all up and then take the square root of that sum of squares as per the formula. And what we see is that the distance between these two configurations is square root of 17. 
Now, is that obvious? Well, well, no, this is coming from the distance formula. This is a very different way of thinking than you may be used to. But we're not done. Let's keep going and consider what is the maximal distance between points in a 49-dimensional space when I look at points that lie within a certain region. Let's start off with something uh, nice, not so bad. We're going to start off with the unit ball in a 49-dimensional space. That is the set of all points that is within distance one of the origin. That's going to look kind of like a, a nice round ball does in R3. And it's going to have very similar properties in that since all the points are within distance one of the origin, the, the diameter, the maximal distance you can get between two points is equal to two. That much should be intuitively clear. And that holds in any dimension, not just three, not just 49. Now things get a little different when you move to a unit cube. So think of a cube where all of the sides are of length one. In 2D, that would be a square. In 3D, a cube. In 49D, what is the maximal distance between two points? That is the, the corner to corner distance. Well, applying the distance formula that we have in a 49 dimensional space, all of the differences between the various coordinates is equal to one. So we take the square root of one squared plus one squared plus one squared all the way up. We get the square root of 49, that is seven. So that means you've got this little unit cube, all the side lengths are one, but if you uh, put your fingers on opposite corners, then the tips of your fingers are seven units apart. That is a little counterintuitive. That's a little weird. You would think cubes are, are smaller than uh, unit balls, but that's the way things work in higher dimensions. Okay, so we've got some geometry down. Are we ready for calculus yet? No, we're still not ready for calculus. We need more tools going forward. That's what comes next.